we are going to talk today about stringing. First of all, I want you to know that there are a lot of different types of stringing materials out there. And you can get stringing for eight inch dolls, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Or you can get stringing for something like a Patty Clay Pal. Once you learn how to do a certain kind of doll, you can use this technique for lots of different sizes of dolls. I get my string from Dolls Part because it's very good quality stringing. And they have a kit that you can get multi multiple sizes of string. So what I'm going to show you today is how to restring a Madame Alexander who's gotten loosey goosey on her elastic. So what you have to do first, which is the part that I hate the most, is you have to undress the doll because they have multiple layers on. And it's really hard to restring a doll with all the dresses on. This doll you can see is one unit. However, the head is strung to the legs. That's how I do it. And the arms are strung together by themselves. So that's what I'm gonna show you. That's the technique that I'm gonna show you how to do. Now, the first thing I do is I just cut, I cut the elastic off. And usually what happens is the legs fall off. I have to decide which string is going to be the correct size. Eight inch doll uh, will take the smallest size that Dolls Part sells. Now, the reason that I'm rec recommending Dolls Part, and you can get string other places, but you can call them and say, I am restringing an eight inch doll. What size do I need? And they will tell you how, to, which size you need. Then you go on their website and you just order it. And they'll give you the number and everything. It's so simple. How do you figure out how much you need? Well, trial and error tells me that there's a hook in here and I'll show you the hook in a minute. And what I do is I measure twice from the head to the bottom so that I have a little extra, the head to the bottom of the torso, and then I cut it off. And now that's how much I'm going to use to restring the doll. Most Madame Alexander dolls come with a hook. This will be your hardest thing you do. You need either pliers or what I call hemostats. Is that what you call these? Yeah, yes. hemostats. They're medical, but doll people use these things of all sizes. These are a second pair of hands for me, and I have to have them. You put the side of the hook that's going into the neck. Now, this is actually the side that goes into the neck, up into the head. So. That's gonna be my hardest thing to do, is get that hook. I'm gonna, I'm gonna string it first and see if I can get it into the neck. So this is trial and error. Now I taught Deborah, our 15 year old little um, docent, how to do this. It took her a little while, but she's really good at it now. There is a bar up in, in the top of the head. You do not want to touch the eyes. Do not go to the eyes. There's a bar at the top of the head and it's made of metal. And you go up in, and you hook that hook onto the bar. Now, if I were you, I would now clamp it with my second set of hands. And then I put that string down into the body of the doll. And I want to go through one leg. I want, I want just, this is how I do it. Not everybody does it this way, but I want to go through one leg. So I take another pair of hemostats and usually I'm working flat, which is a lot easier than working up in the air. And I lay my doll down and I fish the string, the elastic, through one leg. So I'm gonna go into one leg and I found one string, now I've gotta find the other string. And it takes a little practice. 
So now I have both strings. See, and it came off. Okay. So now I'm going to clip the bottom. I don't want to lose. See how I have this right here? I'm going to clip the bottom because I lost the hook on the top. So now I want to put the hook in the top back in. It's okay. It happens. You have a smaller, now I can't get it off. See how this is? This holds the neck better. It's not going to come off. This is wider. It'll go over that bar that's in the head. Okay. Now I'm taking my hemostats off and I'm going to clamp here so I don't lose this. So now you have the beginning. Now you're going to go for, well, first of all, after you string about 40 of these, you start putting the legs on backwards. That's not good. So you make sure that right and left, you put it so that you can see where the legs go. Oftentimes the hooks fall out. So that's another thing that you want to do is you want to put this on a surface where you can't lose the hooks because you will lose the hooks. These smaller ones are for the arms and the longer ones are for the neck, the head. So you just, you just know that the longer ones, you don't put those in the arms, otherwise that's bad. The longer ones are for the head, the shorter ones are for the arms and the legs. So now I've got, I've got this out of one leg. So I'm gonna look at the leg that's on the correct size, hopefully. And I'm gonna try to get the hook back in and the hook that goes in, I always forget. See, it's the same thing. Little gooseneck here and a rounded side. I put this side and again, I don't think it matters which way you go. If you go in, this is just easier for me. And then I take the hook and I string a string through the leg and I'm gonna clamp it because I don't want it to fall off, but it might. And then I have to start again. Okay, clamp it. Now put both strings through the other leg Unclamp, clamp. See what I'm doing? Okay. So now one leg is on, one leg is off. Then you put the other leg on. Now, does it matter which string you use? You kind of have to decide which string is available. I can't use the string that I already used for the other leg. That won't work. So one string is available. Do you see the top one? I'm going to use that. I'm just going to string that on here. You can either put it through or and then they are together but not tied. So this is all you do to finish it up. You pull it and again, it will give you a hard time. You just have to keep trying. All right, you tie a knot. Now, if it's too hard to tie a knot for you like this, then clamp the dumb thing. And what you have to do is tie it, but you have to take the clamp off because you have to go very tight very tight. And then I always tie my knots in three. One, two, three. Now, that's what it looks like when you're done. Can you leave it like that? No. So you take your little scissors and you don't cut it so, you can leave a tail because guess what? This will just fit right inside. Wow. I would probably do the arms as well, just because I don't want to have to deal with it. 
So I'll show you how to do the arms. So all you do is you take the leftover piece that you just cut, that much will do it. You put it through arm to arm and you'll have to just guide it and clamp it. Clamp it at the end because you're gonna pull this all the way here. Again, you make sure that you have the left and right arm. All of these dolls are made different. This one happens to have the clamp, the, the little ring already there. So I have no choice which way to do it. I just put it through. And then I stick the string through the other side and hope that I can get it, I can fish it through. Now, there it is, clamp it. So you can get the other one. You can use either one, you just need to get a string so that you can tie a knot and that is all you need. So it doesn't matter, but this has a little bit of elastic already stuck in it. So I'll just take it out. I just put it through the hook. That's all I did. I just put it through the hook. So I'm pulling it as hard as I can. And I'm gonna make a knot and I'm gonna tie it two or three times, but I'm gonna take the hemostats out first before I make it as tight as I can. You do not, if you don't tighten these, your arms and legs will be so loose that you have to do it all over again. Okay, there you go. Now, again, I'm not gonna tie, I'm not gonna cut it totally because if you do that, the knot will slip out. So leave a little and then either with hemostats or uh, tweezers, I could put them in. There she is. Take them back. 